Hello, my name is Will Spooner. I'm the CEO of Zeta Genomics, a company founded to commercialise the outputs of the OpenCB project. Uh, and I'm delighted to be back at BOSC, albeit virtually, uh, to uh, present OpenCGA, uh, the Genome Optimised Data Store. Now, OpenCGA is open source software, uh, and it uh, has, in my opinion, the potential to transform the way that we uh, manage and analyse genomic information. Uh, so uh, the, in the context uh, that, that, that I'm talking about here is, is, is the rise of, uh, of precision and genomic medicine fueling uh, the interest in, uh, in the field of genomics. The Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, for instance, uh, is predicting that there will be in excess of 100 million whole genomes sequenced within the next few years. Uh, there are more and more data sets are growing to a very, very large sizes, uh, uh, joining the, the Genomics England 100,000 uh, genomes program in, in, in their scale. And the, one of the significant challenges for the field uh, is around the use of POSIX file systems, uh, which are simply not appropriate for the management of uh, data sets of that scale. The solution, uh, of course, is to, uh, is to introduce the big data stack to, gen to genomics, uh, and that is exactly what OpenCGA does. So if we think about this from a, uh, a, a, a genomic uh, workflow perspective, uh, we have the current situation where we're writing our genome data files, our BCF files, uh, into uh, uh, generic file storage, uh, and that creates a number of challenges. Uh, first of all, the BCF files are, are effectively uh, static text documents, uh, and they're pretty much immutable once they've been written. Uh, a second uh, issue is accessibility. Uh, the files are only really accessible by bioinformaticians who can understand the contents of the files uh, and uh, the bioinformaticians also need access to the local file system. And then there's scalability. Anything, uh, any project uh, over a couple of thousand whole genomes uh, has to be split over a large uh, number of, uh, of VCF files. Uh, and uh, what that really does is, is, is makes the downstream analysis pipelines pretty linear, pretty inflexible. And what the pipelines generate themselves is yet more static, uh, static text files. Uh, now, uh, what we believe is that, uh, that the generic file storage uh, can be replaced pretty much wholesale by a genome optimized data store. And uh, this transforms the situation. So the new workflow is that you stream your genomic data into your data store and it is uh, normalized, deduplicated at uh, ingestion. It is then linked and annotated within the data store and it, it is uh, transactional within the data store. Um, uh, once in the, in the data store, it, it becomes easily accessible over the internet using web tools and the uh, technologies that, that, that underlie uh, uh, the 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 optimized data store are uh, inherently ultra scale technologies, uh, and uh, that allows a single repository to be deployed that is capable of holding pretty much unlimited uh, volumes of of genomic information in a single repository. Looking downstream of the data store, uh, what was used to be in the old world your analysis pipelines uh, now becomes a real time. Uh, real-time uh, uh, query against the database which returns enriched and annotated information and it's performed by the analysts and so the interpretation it becomes iterative it becomes more collaborative uh, and that uh, leads to improved decisions improved in insight and much greater opportunities for data reuse. Um, so OpenCGA is a, a, an optimized data uh, genome optimized data store that uses a big data stack, and it's been developed over a five-year collaboration between the University of Cambridge and Genomics England under the OpenCB umbrella. So what is OpenCGA? Well, you can think of it as a uh, platform that provides convenient access to a range of, uh, of stakeholders uh, to uh, an integrated data set that contains the genotype data uh, linked to the sample and uh, clinical metadata and linked to the, uh, the, the reference annotation data. Um, and uh, the stakeholders access through a, 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 an access layer, a set of data services that provide for programmatic access, web applications that provide point and click access, and also an authorization and authentication layer provides security to make sure that everything is kept secure. Okay, so what 
sort of things does the does can 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 open uh, open CGA, uh, can you load into open CGA? well the first thing is the, uh, the the output of your secondary bioinformatics analysis your your genotype data uh, uh, and it can also uh, integrate with lab information management systems uh, uh, and ingest sample uh, metadata uh, and then clinical and phenotypic metadata from, for example, electronic health record systems. Uh, these are all loaded and linked uh, within the uh, within the OpenCGA data store, uh, and then they are annotated against information in a knowledge base. In a knowledge base, uh, OpenCGA works with the the, the, the cell based knowledge base, which is also a product of the OpenCB project. Uh, so once everything is, is is loaded and annotated within the system, it's then available for expert analysis. Uh, expert analysis uh, can be uh, used for generating research insight. That research insight then eventually makes its way back into the knowledge bases where it becomes available for further annotating the information in the data store. Uh, uh, other uh, application area is uh, clinical decision support, uh, so use of the information in, in clinical interpretations. The results of those interpretations can then be loaded uh, straight back into, uh, directly into, in, into the data store, and they provide further annotation of the information that's, that, that, that's held. Um, OpenCGA is a client server architecture. So on the client side, uh, you have your analysts on their workstations, and they can access and interact with the data in OpenCGA through the OpenCGA web application called IVA. Uh, the, uh, there are, are uh, client libraries for Python uh, and for R, which allows uh, allows programmers to uh, to to uh, 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 code uh, access to OpenCGA within their within their application code. And there's also an OpenCGA command line interface for convenient access direct from uh, the terminal. Uh, all of the clients communicate with OpenCGA through a REST web, web interface, uh, and uh, the, the, the web interface is a, an interface onto the OpenCGA middleware, and the middleware then orchestrates uh, the queries and requests to the data layer and also out to the uh, cell based knowledge base. So looking in a little bit more detail at the server side of OpenCGA, so we have the middleware, uh, which is the web applications, the query planning, running asynchronous jobs, uh, and the middleware then communicates with the data layer using a, a over a service oriented architecture. Uh, and uh, there are a number of different data stores that we use that, that, that are used by OpenCGA, uh, depending on the nature of the uh, of, of, of the information that, that, that that's being represented. So uh, uh, the genetic variants, uh, the uh, sample genotypes, and the variant annotation are very well represented in a wide column data store. And the software that that, that, that is used is Apache HBase. Uh, the clinical and sample metadata are uh, stored in a MongoDB document document store. And then the uh, wide column store and the document store are kind of glued together, if you like, uh, using solar search indexes. Uh, these provide query optimization and they also enable combined genotype and phenotype queries uh, against the integrated data. Uh, they also from the from the catalog as part of the metadata are references to the source data files, the BAMs and CRAMs, and this uh, enables these the, things like uh, alignments uh, to be um, to, 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 to be uh, extracted uh, from, uh, from 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 the front end as well. Uh, so what does it look like in a real application? Thinking about the uh, uh, 100,000 genomes project, uh, so the the infrastructure that that has been stood up for Genomes England consists of a cluster of about uh, 30 machines, a uh, Kubernetes cluster, a Hadoop cluster, a couple of big VMs for Mongo, some a couple of VMs for Solar, um, and, and so that's that, that's sort of the, the size of infrastructure that is needed for for one of these very large uh, genomics projects. Uh, now I want to move on and, and show a bit of a demo what it looks like to query hundreds of millions of variants in real time uh, via a uh, via via a web in, via a web interface and also uh, showing uh, showing you how the 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 system is very well suited to. Uh, 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 querying the, the, the data at all scales from many tens of thousands of whole genomes uh, or alternatively just down to a, a single you know, interpretation of a, of a single sample of a, of a, of a single uh, clinical case.
So this is IVA, the web user interface for OpenCGA, and the data set that we're going to start with is Nomad Genomes. Uh, this is a summary level data set that consists of about uh, uh, 70,000 whole genome sequences. And the first question is, how many unique variants are there in Nomad? And the answer is just over 700 million unique variants. So how do we drill down into that to, to, to find a, 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 the number that satisfy a particular query? Now, the query that we're going to use is the, uh, the uh, pathogenic uh, stop gained variants in the ACMG incidental findings genes. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, set uh, a filter for those, uh, those variants that are annotated as pathogenic in ClinVar. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to set uh, filter by the the 59 genes on the on on the ACMG panel, and the third filter that we're going to set is consequence type. We're only interested in stop gain, uh, so we can go through our list of of, of consequence types, uh, stop gained, and so there we have our three filters set. And then we set click search, and of those 700 million variants. And this is a real-time query against the uh, OpenCGA web services. We find that there are 226 that satisfy our criteria. Uh, now, um, uh, Nomad is a is summary level data set, so we're going to do a little bit, generate a few summary statistics using our using IVA's aggregation function, and we're going to aggregate by gene. So we're saying which uh, of 226 variants, which genes are they found in? And so we find that. 37 of them are found in BRCA, are found in BRCA2, and at the other extreme, uh, there, there's one, there's only one found in, in, in some of these other genes at the other end of the distribution. Uh, something we can do with IVA is we can save filters. So I'm going to save this filter. I'm going to call it BOSC. Uh, and I'm now going to take this filter and I'm going to apply it to a different data set I'm going to apply it to the thousand genomes data set we do have um, we do have uh, sample level information for this uh, for this particular data set uh, there are 72 million unique variants in in the thousand genomes and we can pull up our filter that we've just saved and so this is going to tell us how many pathogenic stop gained uh, variants there are in the ACMG genes and they get a real-time query there's 13 of those so I'm going to drill down, rather than try a summary aggregation, I'm going to drill down into information for a particular variant. I've selected uh, this one here, which is in the S stop gain of the SDHB gene. Uh, having a look at the clinical annotation, what, what clinical annotation do we have about this variant? And we find that there's a number of different studies from Climbar uh, that, are, are, that suggest that, uh, that this gene is associated with uh, hereditary cancer predisposing syndrome. Uh, and uh, also that it is monoallelic, so you only need one copy of the allele uh, to 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 uh, express the phenotype. Uh, is how common is this is this variant? We can have a look in 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 our in our sample sample stats, and we find that there's just a single sample in this collection that uh, that is uh, is heterozygous for this uh, particular variant. We could have a look at the beacon function to see, see, see which other um, uh, data sources in the beacon network have, uh, have, 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 this, have this variant. Um, but uh, what I'm gonna show you now is how we can drill, drill down even further to the sample level uh, using, uh, to, to the sample level using, using IVA and the data in C OpenCGA. So we, we've now uh, moved into our case in, the IVA case interpretation tool. I'm gonna jump straight to the sample variant browser. I'm gonna go back to filters. I'm gonna pick up the pre, the pre cam filter again. Right, BOSC, there's the BOSC filter. Click search, real time query. And we find that um, there is there is just one, and it's the same one as we were looking at earlier, SDHB, stop gained. And if I hover over the sample genotypes, uh, we can find a display of the information that was extracted from the original VCF that was loaded uh, into the system. So OpenCGA is completely non-lossy with regards to the VCF information that was loaded into it. In fact, you can uh, you can think of uh, OpenCGA to some extent as a uh, as a VCF uh, database. Okay, I'll stop the demo there and move back to the main presentation. So this is uh, this is my last slide, and the purpose of this is to is to reiterate that uh, OpenCGA uh, is uh, fantastic and open source software, and it's freely available from GitHub. Uh, it is developed, and maintained by over forty uh, contributors worldwide. Uh, it, it is used uh, by 
by uh, uh, several very high profile genomics initiatives. Genomics England, for instance, use OpenCGA in both their uh, clinical pipeline and also uh, in their trusted uh, research environment. Uh, and also that the uh, the community, the OpenCGA community is, is growing uh, and we'd be absolutely delighted for, for more people to come and uh, really discover what it is like to run uh, bioinformatics using a, a, a big data a big data stack. So please do uh, go over to, to GitHub and, and see what it's all about. Uh, acknowledgements, uh, Nacho Medina, who is uh, the lead developer of OpenCB. He is uh, founder of Zeta Genomics and he's head of the uh, University of Cambridge Computational Biology Laboratory. And he's really the driving force behind uh, OpenCB uh, and OpenCGA. At Zeta, we have Hakabo, Pedro and Laura. At Genomics England, Antonio, Julie and Javier. And at the University of Cambridge, there's uh, Daniel and Herkin. So thank you very much for listening.